Hi everyone, I'm Anakshi and I welcome you all to Tathastu and welcome back to our environment and ecology series in which we have discussed about ecosystem. Now today we will be and we have also discussed about the various component of ecosystem. Today we will be discussing and continuing it about ecosystem, the functions it perform and about some energy flow. So we will be discussing about ecosystem only, the functions of ecosystem and energy flow. So let's start. But but before that, these are the courses which are offered by the Thas to ISIS for all of you. There is MSLV which specifically targets your mains examination. Then we have NCRT module. Then we have PSLV which will target your prelims examination and it will be launching very soon. And then we have philosophy optional. For further inquiries, you can call on these numbers and you can also visit the office on this address. And if you have any other doubts or any other inquiries about these courses, you can also check the Thastu's website. So I hope you have understood this. Now let's move forward and begin today's class which is about ecosystem, the functions of ecosystem. So these are the uh, some functions of, which are performed by an ecosystem and I hope you have un uh, watched that video and understood very clearly that what is ecosystem. So these are certain functions which are performed by our ecosystem. Number one is ecological succession or ecological development. Now what is it? For this is in very simple terms is the development or the changes which take place over a certain uh, period of time in a particular area. Let's under, uh, understand this by an example. For example, okay, I'll draw it over here. This is a bare rock. Okay, there's no plants, nothing over that, that exists over here that is just a bare rock. Now with uh, time, over a period of time, small uh, green, you have also witnessed, you may have witnessed this, these small grass which grows on a rock. So with time, this small grass starts growing on this rock and it is known as lichens. Then over a period of time, we have these small grasses or perennials where that means they can exist unconditionally then with time we have other grasses we have shrubs and we have uh, then we have these shrubs which are shade intolerant and with time we develop we advance more we have another trees uh, we have another trees and grasses which are shade tolerant so this is how we started from just a rock and with time you know, we have these small grass which was uh, which is known as lichens then we have these small grasses then we have trees and shrubs which are shade tolerant and the uh, shade intolerant and then we have trees shrubs and big trees which are shade tolerant so when we started the the first stage is known as this pioneer community from where we started so the first stage from where we start is known as pioneer community and when the movie ends what we say the climax of the movie so similarly we can say that the final stage is known as the climax so the final stage is known as the climax so this is how what is ecological uh, succession in simple terms it's uh, that the development of a particular area because of certain changes taking place right so we have started from a rock and we have moved towards a lot of trees and grasses so this is what is ecological succession now moving toward let let's understand the second functions of uh, function of ecosystem which is homeostasis so what is homeostasis now homeostasis is the ability to maintain that internal temperatures uh, irrespective of what changes are taking place in the external factors so the ability to maintain or stabilize the internal temperature irrespective what other changes are taking place in the environment right uh, for example if the certain changes our brain sends signal to our body right so this is how our body maintains that temperature because there are certain factors which keep changing around us so homeostasis is basically the uh, the, the ability to maintain those uh, internal things irrespective of the external things or the ex uh, external envi environmental factors which are taking place now third is energy flow we will be learning about this in detail energy flow through food chain food webs and various other things and lastly we have nutrient cycles various biogeochemical 
cycle so we will be covering it in different videos because they are very important in upsc ask a lot of questions from this particular section so these are some functions which are performed by our ecosystem and i hope they are clear to you now moving towards the energy flow which is our second topic for today we are discussing about the function and energy flow so what is energy flow energy flow and we are talking about ecosystem so energy flow in an ecosystem is described as movement or transfer of energy from one trophic level to another in an ecosystem so trophic level means from producers to consumers how that energy is transferred so that is basically energy flow the energy that is transmitted is in form of chemical energy and the transfer of energy through the trophic level is unidirectional it starts from producers so yesterday we learned what are producers producer basically who can make their own food certain plants are producers right so they can make their own food so the energy is uni unidirectional means its flow uh, only in one direction it starts from these producers to consumers which uh, consist of several heterotrophs consumers were those who are dependent on others for their food now moving to our uh, next point due to the loss of energy so but we have, we are studying about energy flow so we can understand or assume this that there is energy flow from this plants to consumer as we move upward there is this energy flow but when that energy is flowing there is certain loss of energy also that is known as 10% rule now in simple terms it is nothing but uh, a very simple very simple thing that only 10% of energy is transferred to another trophic level rest 90% energy is lost in the process so only 10% energy is transferred from uh, these producers and as we move towards the consumer so due to this this is what is loss of energy so due to this loss of energy in form of heat at each trophic level so there are certain trophic level and each trophic level only 10% of energy is passed and the energy level drops from first uh, trophic level onwards so i hope you have understood uh, this that as we move upward the energy levels keep dropping only 10% is passed to the another trophic level so this is what is energy flow now this have three concept which is our food chain food web and ecological pyramids so what is food chain food chain let's understand we have grass now this grass is consumed by a grasshopper right the grasshopper this grass is the food of a grasshopper now this grasshopper is food of rat this food is this rat is food of snake and then this snake is food of eagle so this is our food chain see how it started from grass uh, this grasshopper was dependent on grass then uh, this rat was dependent on grasshopper then our snake was dependent on rat and then our eagle was dependent on snake so this is basically how everyone is interconnected this so this is you can easily understand that this is our food chain how they all are dependent on each other for or their food and this is one thing this is for grazing food chain we also have these detrivores we have understood uh, we have learned about it yesterday that what are detrivores who uh, feed on this dead organic matter dead plants or dead animals so they, this is about the grazing system there is detrivores food chain also where for example you can consider a leaf a uh, leaf which is rotten or it is decayed then it is consumed by certain bacteria or fungi and then they are consumed by these earthworms right so this is our food chain so this is also how they are dependent on each other so we can uh, understand it in very simple terms that uh, certain trophic level at particular level one species is dependent on other species for food so this uh, this is basically our food chain now what is food web lot of food chain this is just an example where you have understood that grass eats gra grasshopper and this red eat grasshopper red might eat some other thing also right lizard can also eat grasshopper there are lot of other species this was to just example so there are certain food chain certain different food chain which are interconnected with each other and that forms our food web and even if 
peer study also we talked about this in our previous class that even if one species vanishes now then there is threat to another now suppose if the lizard does not have a certain species to eat then uh, the result uh, it, it will be difficult for the lizard also to survive right so even in this food chain everyone is interdependent on each other and the absence of a species may threaten the existence of another species so this is what is our food chain and food web now the most important thing about the uh, one of the most important thing about this concept is about our ecological pyramid so what are these let's understand they are even these ecological pyramids are divided into three parts number one is pyramid of numbers so uh, let's do it like this so this is our pyramid now what is pyramid of numbers you can understand it from this only you can break whenever you have difficulty in understanding certain things always try to break that thing it will be easy for you to understand so if we are talking about pyramid of numbers that means we are talking about certain thing which is related to numbers now to, uh, what is pyramid of number it is total number of individuals of different species right it is total number of individual of different species now what is upright and inverted pyramid so upright is like this and then we can have this inverted pyramid as well so what is upright pyramid when the organism from the lowest level uh, from the lowest level to the upper level they start decreasing for example at lowest level uh, at lowest level what do we have at lowest level we have these producers like right so we have lots of plants and trees at this level now as we move forward then what do we have we have consumers then consumers are also divided into certain part first of all we have we have these herbivores right so we have some, uh, herbivores in large numbers then as we move upward we will have carnivores we will have primary carnivores we can have these secondary carnivores and then we have top carnivores so agar uh, if we try to understand it in very uh, through common sense also the, we can understand that we have lot lot of plants and trees right so that forms part of our producer but as we start moving upward we don't have that much number of species that they are top carnivores so that means these are the number is decreasing as we are moving upward so this pyramid is upward as the number it keeps decreasing and then we can ha also have this inverted pyramid right so this is the pyramid of number this you know this upright pyramid is for this grazing system it can be for ponds ponds uh, ecosystem as well and this inverted is related to the tree ecosystem now moving towards the pyramid of biomass so biomass pyramid is a representation of total living biomass or organic matter present at different tropic levels that is from producers to consumer in an ecosystem and this biomass pyramid can also be upward or inverted how if we talk about this Uh, the grassland system right then we we have as a, we have discussed over here we have lots of plants then as uh, we start moving upward we have these producers we have uh, sorry we have these uh, herbivores carnivores right we have these number this total that it is representation of total living biomass or organic matter and then if we talk about inverted thing so inverted is this aquatic one where we have little number of these uh, producers in the in this marine life uh, with they are known as phytoplanktons right so they are known as phytoplanktons as we start moving forward we have these herbivore fish small fish then we have top carn top carnivore fish just a minute so these are our phytoplanktons then we have these herbivores then we have the top carnivorous fish now when we talk about this aquatic life uh, this marine life so we can even through our common sense we can understand that we have lots of fishes but inside we have a small small area of these phytoplanktons this grass area which is uh, yeah for 
or the area which is dedicated to these grass things or these plant thing but if we talk about fish so we have plenty of marine life so if we talk about the mass we are talking uh, talking about total living biomass or organic matter that we will have over here that is the reason at the top that is the reason why this is this pyramid is inverted because the mass is increasing as we are moving upwards now if we talk about the pyramid of energy so it represent the amount of energy at each trophic level and the loss of energy at each transfer to another trophic level so in the beginning or in the beginning of this video only we have discussed that as we move upwards from uh, producers to consumer the energy starts decreasing because 90 percent energy is lost at certain level only 10 percent energy is passed to another trophic level so this pyramid of energy is always upright and it cannot be inverted because always the energy will as you move upward as you move upward towards this uh, carnivores the energy will always decrease it will not increase because they, this is this law of 10 percent energy other energy is lost in the process of this heat formation so this is the reason why this pyramid of energy is always upright and i hope this all th these all things are clear to you, you have understood about the ecological pyramids really really well and you found the session interesting as well as helpful and if you find it please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you